Hey there, everybody. I'm going to do some pouring. I've got four canvases that I want to do, all different techniques, but pretty much with the same colors. And there was someone in one of my Facebook groups who was questioning whether you could use enamels with your paint pouring. And I commented that I don't know why not. It's latex based, it's water based. I don't know why you couldn't use enamels for paint pouring. So I thought I would test out the theory with Deco Art patent leather high gloss paints. And they had shipped me some samples a while back, and the only four that I got were the red, white, turquoise, and black and I wanted to add a primary yellow into that. So I just got their gloss enamel bright yellow which should work about pretty much the same way. And I'm going to empty these bottles into these cups and I'm going to do a one-to-one -one ratio with Floetrol. I would use the pouring medium but not everybody has access to the pouring medium yet. Some people have not been able to find it and I wanted to use Floetrol just to make sure it was uh, something that everybody uses and has access to um, as far as at least in the United States. And people can use Oetrol in uh, the European area. So uh, I'm going to mix one to one ratio with Floetrol, which is also in my little yellow squeeze bottle, which I probably will not use, but I've got my big bottle. And it is Flood Floetrol latex based, which means water based. You cannot use oil based paint conditioner or thinners with water based paints or latex paints. So I just wanted to point that out. Got my gloves on and then I've got water in the bottle here with about 10% of Floetrol in this as well. It just helps everything mix up a little bit better that way. And I think I might do one pour without anything added to it. No silicone, no OGX, nothing. And then the other three, I'm going to use my OGX, which is what I love, 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 because it smells delicious and it produces such beautiful cells if you don't do a lot of stirring and if you put very little in. So this is a four ounce bottle and I've had it at least five months and I am still not halfway into my bottle. So it lasts forever. So even if you have to pay 10 or $11 on Amazon for it, it is well worth it because it's going to last you probably at least a half a year if you don't go overboard on using it too much because you it takes very little to get great cells with OGX. This is coconut milk anti-breakage serum and not all coconut milk products are the same. This has dimethicone in it. It's the second item on the ingredients. So if you look at your hair ingredients and if it's got dimethicone in it, you're probably good to go. I'm going to work, be working with a 12 inch canvas too. So I'm going to empty these bottles and what you're going to see is when I totally get the paint out of the bottle, I'm going to squirt a little of my water Floetrol mixture into the bottle and that will just help rinse the paint out of that bottle and utilize it as much as possible mixed in with the paint. So I've not tried the patent leather paints before. Debbie Coles has done a video on YouTube where she did it with a, a pair of black high heel pumps and they looked really awesome and she coated them with the white and then she used the red and the blue on it and they were really adorable. So I know she's done a video with the patent leather paints but I don't know if anybody else has. I was going to see if I can let that just sit for a minute. Again, this one is not the patent leather paint, but it is a gloss enamel, so it's basically, I would think, the same kind of stuff. It might not adhere as well as the patent leather paint would, but, you know, we're talking about on a canvas, so you don't have to have a high, high ad adhesion factor because 
Obviously patent leather, if you paint on patent leather, you need it to stick to it because it's a slick surface. So there might be some other factors in that patent leather paint that make it a little bit hardier. I'm not sure. So I'm basically just trying to let these kind of flow down in the bottle if at all possible. It's kind of hard to tilt your bottle on the cup. I guess I'll give up on that. But what I can do is I can put the lid on and turn it upside down for a minute. I have had some come out of this one, so that's a good thing. So I'll put these upside down. I just drip black in the other cup. It's interesting once they, once you pour them out, it just kind of keeps pouring. That's the interesting part is it doesn't stop like a regular bottle of paint. It just kind of keeps going. So when I get this black out of this other cup, I'll put the blue in there just in case I don't want the... Uh, now that one came out. I had not shaken it up very well. That's interesting. So there's blue and then there's all these ripples of paint coming out. So I just didn't mix the... Uh, the color in with the product very well. It's stringy. That's very interesting. I've had these paints for a little while too, so I don't know if that's one of the reasons why that blue separated. Probably. You know, every, every once in a while it's just kind of the luck of the draw. You'll pick up a bottle of paint or something and you'll open it up and it'll be dried out inside or something funky. And that's probably pretty true across the board for any paint company. There's just going to occasionally be one that dries on the shelf or, you know, whatever. So you just kind of have to take it with the, the odds. So like I said, I'm going to add a little water that has the flow trawl in it to each bottle just to help empty that paint out of the bottle. There's still more paint coming in this one. I just put me a piece of new butcher paper down. It always looks so pretty when it's just brand new but then you always have to get paint on it and mess it up. And I could have actually added this after I put my flow trawl in, but either way, I'm going to add two ounces of flow trawl, so it's not going to really make that much difference. It's getting ready to storm again here. I think the last time I was filming, it was raining really hard, but it, the sky is darkening up and it's looking very ominous. But, I'm painting, so I'm a happy girl. So I don't know, I can't remember. I don't think I talked about the, uh, the show in Raleigh. I can't remember, but I had a great time. It was a young crowd. I was definitely the older, one of the oldest, if not the oldest ones showing there. And, um... So it was quite a young crowd, and most of the people that probably were there were probably people that were supporters of the artist, and there was over 50 artists. And um, But there was music and fashion and hair and makeup and jewelry and wood carving and all kinds of neat stuff. And um, so there was a lot of really awesome talent. And because people had paid $22 for the tickets to get in the door and $7 for parking, they almost paid $30 to come to this venue just to support their art friends. That's why I decided to bump my prices way down on my canvases. So the 12 inch canvases normally that I would sell on my website for well over $100, I sold them for $30, but I sold over 10 of them. I sold some jewelry, um, some prints, and a clock. The green, the lime green clock that I have a video on. And um, 
I made some good connections and I've already had one or two people that bought stuff from me at the event that tagged me on Facebook. We became friends on Facebook and I've already got a commission from one of their friends who saw my artwork because she posted my artwork on her page on Facebook. So it was kind of a great opportunity overall for everyone you know, to intermingle. Her daughter was the lady that posted a picture of the painting she bought from me. Her daughter was also an artist at the event who was probably maybe 20 years old. And um, so she was there supporting her daughter, but yet she came and bought a necklace and a canvas from me and now she actually wants two more small canvases that I had there that didn't sell and she decided she wanted those as well so I'm going to meet up with her and um, get those canvases to her but um, so it was one of her friends that actually asked me about painting her something so it's always great to make connections with people. It's not always about making the top dollar. It's more about connection with people. That's how you you build your following, your collectors, your client base, um, your friendships. To me, it's very important to connect with the people that I sell my art to. And um, I've already sold several pieces, and I just sold the piece that I've just posted called en Enchanted Garden. I just sold it today from one of my friends on YouTube and Facebook. She's a new friend of mine through YouTube, but she bought a print of mine, and now she wants this canvas that I just painted, and so I am just like totally happy about that. I'll show you the painting. In case you haven't seen the video yet, I'll show you the painting before I start this pour. It's funny the thing about white paint and Floetrol, you can't tell if it's mixed together or not, but you just got to keep stirring and making sure that it's really mixed well. And I'm going to speed through the rest of this really quick. So the turquoise <clears throat> is the patent leather paint, but I'm afraid that it's not deep enough. I'm going to add a little bit of their Ultra Blue Deep just to see if I can deepen the blue up just a little bit. I'm going to put in a little Prussian Blue as well. It's not enough to change the paint much composition wise, but hopefully it'll deepen that blue just ever so slightly. It's still not going to be a dark blue, like a primary blue, but it is helping. So the consistency of the paint is pretty perfect right now as is without adding any more water. I put some water in the bottles just to release the paint from the bottle so that I could empty out the paint in the bottles so they're totally empty. And I put enough water in that to where um, there's no more need to add any more water. That felt a little heavy, but I guess it's not. So I think on the first painting, I'm going to move the, the flood flow trawl out of the way. I'm also going to bring up my nasty little foil pan, but I've had this thing <clears throat> since the beginning of my acrylic fluid painting days. And I don't use it all the time, but it's great for catching drips if you want to kind of keep your table clean. Also, you can peel the paint out of here. When your paint is dry, it peels out very easily, and it's great for skins if you want skin. So again, I'm using black, red, turquoise, and white that are all deco art patent leather paints. They're made to paint patent leather with, but I wanted to see if I could do acrylic pours with enamel paints because someone in the Facebook group had asked if you could do pours with enamels. And if it's water-based, I say go for it. I think you can. I've done just a straight-out pour with no silicone or OGX or anything in it. 
and it kind of came out psychedelic looking. And then I just did a dirty pour, and now I'm going to do a tree ring, I think. I'm hoping I have enough paint to pull this off. So, I'm going to, and oh, and I added, I mixed all the paints one-to-one -one with Flood Floetrol Latex Based. I wanted to use something that everybody could have access to. A lot of people can't find the Deco Art Pouring Medium yet in the stores. So, in order to be able to go ahead and do this, I wanted to show you with the Floetrol. And I have put just a drop of OGX Coconut Milk Anti-Breakage Serum in the red, turquoise, and yellow. I did not put any in the black or white. So I'm not stirring these because I've already put the OGX in and I don't want to stir it and cause the cells to become smaller. The, I think sometimes people think that if they put more of the OGX into their paints it will give them more cells but it actually requires very little. I've had a half a bottle, I've only used a half a bottle of the OGX coconut milk in maybe five or six months. It goes a long way. You don't have to put a ton of it in your colors. And um, so I wanted to share that with you. So this one is going to be a tree ring pour. And I really am trying to like save and use every bit of my paint because I had the four color, the, yeah, I had the four patent leather colors and I added the yellow to it from the glossy enamel line so that I could kind of use the primaries. That's not really a dark blue, it's just turquoise, but um, so I need as much paint as I can because it takes five ounces to cover a 12 inch canvas and I had 20 ounces of paint. So that only gives me five ounces to use per canvas. So I'm trying to salvage every bit of paint that I can. I've got some in my pan here that I may have to use. So we're going to do a dirty, uh, dirty pour, but it's going to be a tree ring, so I kind of want it gradient feeling. Tell you what, I'm going to do a little black. The black may overtake everything, I have no idea. Then red. I'll do black again. This is just totally an experiment. Now I'm going to do blue. little white. Let's do a little red and just a little bit of yellow. So that should be hopefully enough for this canvas. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. The only thing is I'm not, I, I do have OGX in the colors, not the black and white, and I'm not going to do it in a little tight ring. I'm going to do it larger. And then the thing with OGX coconut milk is if you want cells, which I do, I'm going to let this sit and breathe for five to ten minutes. It's 
So I've let this sit for about 10 minutes and I like the fact that it's making some really big cells. I love that. And you notice I used all my runoff paint that's kind of muddy looking uh, in the corners just to give it some coverage because I want to be able to tilt this and cover my whole canvas. And I did want cells. Um, I did not want just a typical tree ring. I've had some lumps in this paint so I've been trying to pick them out because I've had this paint for a while. So I'm trying to keep the table fairly clean. I just put new butcher paper but when you're working with this paint is for patent leather. It's made to stick to patent leather, so it's wanting to stick to this plastic. So I'm just trying to keep as much of it off as I can. So I let those cells sit for a while. It kind of feels Superman looking. <laughs> so I'm going to go this way. I'll let it come back to the center. I'm going to go this way now. Let it go over some of that ugly paint. I don't want to lose all those cells though, but like I said, I want to get rid of that ugly paint. I've got some in a cup here. I'm going to try to I don't know if I like this or not. I may cover it up with black. So for some reason it's not going over that. I'm just going to move it a little bit. Get rid of that ugly area. Put a little black over it maybe. That put a little interest in the other corner at least. And there's a lump there. Stick a little red in there. Just to give it something. And maybe just put a little red. Kind of swipe it through this corner here a little bit. That way, get rid of that muddy color there. I don't know if I can. Put a streak through without messing it up. And let's see if I can get any. I'm trying to see if I can get any yellow. I just need to go straight into the cup. That has a, that has a hint. It's not strong of yellow. I don't want to mess this up.
Now I'm trying to figure out if I want to do anything with this area. It's kind of harsh. I like the way the red and black have kind of glazed over each other a little bit. So just trying to decide which way I want to stretch it. This part is looking like a hippo face to me. <laughs> And I don't want it to look like a hippo face. Um, what can I do? Okay, I'm going to leave it. Because I really wanted it to be what it was poured as and not try to alter it too much. So, but this patent leather paint is very um, thick and rich. It's just I have a few little lumps along the way. Stick a little color there just to take care of the area where I got the lump from. And I thought I saw another one. So here's this one. This is basically a tree ring that I just kind of went in a circular fashion, but not in a tight tree ring. I didn't want the tree ring effect. I wanted the cells. And you can get some beautiful, gorgeous cells with the OGX coconut milk. So that's that one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.